everybody! I'm about to get started on a 30-minute soul journey session. There's going to be energy work and wisdom provided for a client. I'm going to go ahead and read these client goals here, and then we're going to dive in and see where spirit takes us. Okay, so client says, I'm very curious about my past lives. Where have I been? Have extraterrestrials been involved? Was I royalty in any of these lives? Was a big cat involved? Okay. I'm curious about who watches over me as they have not presented themselves to me or come through to anyone. I'm a medical student and I'm confused about what field to pursue and where to live after medical school. What is my karmic lessons and healing of this lifetime? Okay. Oh, cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and relax here. I'm, I, I'm so excited to see what happens. Okay. I'm just acclimating to all the questions. Well, right now I actually feel kind of sad. And I feel even like... Uh, as though a chunk has been taken out of me and it looks like a planet and then take a giant hand and then take a chunk out of a planet but it's a chunk out of my face and neck and my chest it's just like a chunk came out of me and I can't seem to find the missing part of myself and my eyes are unable to see because part the part that chunked off also includes my eyes not necessarily my third eye that's interesting but I see the eyes and then all the way down and all this has been literally just taken off like it's a piece of a puzzle this is a super big deal and this has actually created a lot of suffering for your soul Whatever this is about, I can feel this. And there's a very intriguing light above your head here. It could be related to the crown chakra, but um, it's really gorgeous. It's got a purple, pink, and a white silver color to it. And it's literally like four or five inches above the head. This is some type of starlight that's guiding your way, but because the chunk has been taken out with your eyes included, um, you're trying to find your way in the dark. <sighs> Who isn't trying to find their way in the dark? But this is, is, this is really related to this. It feels this way for your soul on a level that is really deep. <sighs> and hurts. It hurts. I'm going to this part of you. I'm just going to touch you on the shoulder. Man, this is sad. When I touch you on the shoulder, there's a lot of strange dark energy that comes out like uh, fibers, like roots. And it comes and touches my hand and starts to kind of surround my hand. And it's just still touching you here. And there's a vulnerability going on because you're completely stalled out and you instantly hide as though you weren't there. I don't, you know, I'm not here. I'm turned off. Um, this was all an illusion, but this is an illusion. You're afraid. This part of your soul is afraid to reconcile this. As desperately as your soul wants to reconcile this, it's also afraid too because whatever this is, took a chunk out of you and when things take chunks out of us it hurts so to go back and look at something that was traumatizing to your soul is scary okay it's hard on souls to do that but it's really quick if i can get your soul to take a look at it it's going to be really quick for your soul to say oh okay i'm done with that wow i'm free <laughs> so it's still a mystery so I'm going to have to just accept what I've seen so far. And this whole scene is just stopped. Your soul just stopped everything. So I'm just going to let this be as it is. But I'm going to go to the next thing. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper into your energy field. 
Okay, so this is bothering my eyes and I feel sad again. This is a real emotional sadness that creates tears. And I see a little girl and she's squeezed between a wall and her mother's legs, actually. She's wearing a little pink um, type of skirt and a little, I don't know, some sort of, um, it's like blue and white striped tank top and it's all dirty. She's, uh, she's, I mean, it's more modern day looking clothes. She looks like a Hispanic. Um, she has really beautiful brown eyes, brown hair, and a, a little ponytail, maybe three or four years old. And she's behind her mother's legs and a wall, and she's kind of smooshed in there. Now, this is the next challenge. Because I encourage her to come out from hiding. And this space becomes so completely blocked up and jammed up. I mean, it literally becomes a solid. So again, your soul is yet doing this again. And it's totally jamming up this whole scene. Um, and just putting a giant rock or boulder in my way from moving deeper into you. Okay? That's fine, because I just keep doing this until your soul just stops already. <laughs> and it does stop. It really will stop. So, but I'm not going to go deeper than this. I'm just going to touch this scene as just, a, it's like a painting on a giant rock. And I'm just going to touch this scene. And your soul is really trying to get my attention. It looks like a black, um, angry, shadowy thing. And uh, I just ignore it. <laughs> Because this is the real you. This is something really, this really vulnerable thing, whatever this is about. And you're having a hard time allowing me to go deep into you and to see these things. And you're actually developing a bow and arrow and you're shooting arrows at me to, to stop. So I just simply share love here. And I tell the little girl you're safe. And I create a reality where this is a real scene. And I welcome the girl to come on out and to hold my hand. You're getting angrier and angrier and you shoot even more like three arrows at a time. You're really trying to get me to stop. And and I, I tell this part of you, I say, it's going to be okay. I know that the arrows is not really you. It's, it's something that makes you feel vulnerable. I'd much rather you just come stand by me. I know you feel vulnerable. So I'd rather you just come stand by me and I'll hold your hand. I'm going to hold this little girl's hand. And then we can walk a little bit deeper together. And you're not going to be alone. You're not going to be alone in this process. Man, I will tell you, this right here is creating so much exhaustion and jam in my emotional gut. And it's like really hard to breathe even. It's very exhausting. All right, I'm moving through and it's like body tissues and it's um, like like intestines or something. Um, it's like silky, a um, little bit of moisture, but blubbery like um, skin. And it's hard to move through because it's, it's um, I'm sort of in it, you know? So it's like bulbous all around me and around us. And we're walking through this tunnel here. I'm almost to something more here. Okay, whatever this is about is also not a good feeling. How do I want to describe this? It's a room. Um, I'm in the room, although it really likes to say that I'm not. And I'm trying to look around it. It looks lavish, actually. Um, it has a, a purple rug, but the purple rug is not like rectangular. It's a triangle. Um, and there's literally a throne chair here and here is the start of the rug and then it comes towards me and the point of the triangle is at my feet. There's also something about lots and lots of rusty nails that are huge. Like, um, they're like humans, they're like giant sized nails, um, and they're all rusty and there's like, uh, batches of, I don't know, like a square of like three, 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 or like row, like a rose, um, and they're coming out the sides of the walls towards me as well. And this triangle is towards me. And I, I actually kneel down 
And then I stand up again. And I I actually call you your honor. <laughs> I say, yes, your honor, but you don't look like a judge. Mm. You also look, the more that I look at you, you're all a smudge, so I don't actually get to see what you look like, but I can tell that you are not a judge in this scene. Um, and the more I try to see through the smudge, you just look like um, black goo, and then it kind of burnt into this throne chair. Um, an indentation of your body. I, I actually wave in the little girl and this uh, other part of you that was shooting arrows at me. I just wave you on in and I uh, say, let's, let's keep going. I will say that you've qu created quite a maze, um, a complex maze in order to avoid looking at this thing. But on the conscious level, you seem to be sensing and you're sharing this information with me. I go into your energy field. What this information translates into is this. Um, so I'm going to have to go through your weird kooky maze in order to find the thing we're looking for. It could very well be a soul fragment. Um, so we just keep moving, okay? Also, throne chairs in the energy realm doesn't necessarily mean um, anything like you were a king in a past life. That doesn't not necessarily mean that either. Um, but oftentimes, it's sort of like um, a part of yourself that took on a, a role, um, a specific frequency. And so now it is sitting on the, the, the throne of its own accomplishments, okay? So I'm in the energy realm here. But that part of you, um, there's obviously something out of balance here. So this throne and this indentation, burnt indentation with black, uh, is actually becoming a doorway and I'm, we're all going to go through it. And I even take what is the remnants of the consciousness of this part of you on the throne chair. I, I take you. I'm, I'm putting you in my pocket, okay? It's just a little energy in my hand and I just put you in my pocket and then we're all going in deeper. <laughs> so see see who else we can bring along on this, on this journey. <laughs> Let's see. What is this next place? It's very quiet in here. The color is really intense, reddish orange. And I'm inside uh, an underground type place. All the, the walls are made out of like a dirt, packed dirt that's reddish orange color. And then the floor is made out of boards and I'm just sitting and it's a rounded space and it seems to have a center that it's not necessarily open, but it has like a, I don't know, a post or something that goes through the center. And it doesn't, I mean, it feels like there's a pathway that could continue through this place. Um, but I, I choose to just sit down in here. And I choose to see this place as its own consciousness. And then I touch the floorboards. And then I touch this beam in the center. This has something to do with your heart and your mental body, your third eye mind. And I send all this information to that beautiful star above your head. Everything I've seen so far. Boy, this is going to take some hard work. I'm melding all of this energy into a heart. Because, boy, you're really, really, I mean, you're really putting up extraordinary blocks here. It's no wonder you can't seem to access your spirit guides. I mean, these are extraordinary blocks here. So I'm having to create you. I'm actually having to create the parts of you that you insist are blocked out. But you don't want me to see them. You don't want me to heal them. You don't want me to have anything to do with them. So I actually have to create what is actually here that you're trying to hide um, in order to heal you. So um, I can only start just one step at a time and continue to learn about your energy field and how you're reacting to everything. All right, so your heart is now here. 
And I say, this is your heart space. And within your heart space, you have these beautiful parts of yourself. This little girl who was hiding behind, you know, between a wall and her mother's legs who needed to come out. Um, this part of you who was afraid and protecting you with the bow and arrow. But really, um, he's, he was trying, he, he's protecting himself from finding a deeper meaning of himself that makes him nervous, makes him feel vulnerable. And then the part of you that went missing in the throne room. And now I have these parts of you here in your heart portal. And heart, it's time for you to start beating. You are alive. You're absolutely alive. And I want to introduce you to these parts. And I want these parts to be introduced to your heart. So I'm walking into your heart and I'm filling it with lots and lots of light and love. Just so you know, it showed me um, that it was like a nursing home or something. Like there was an old man in, at a white table um, and it was very silent and empty feeling. And like nobody ever comes to visit him. It made me very sad. And like he was going to die alone. But he's not alone. And your heart is full of love and vibrancy. And that's the truth. And I'm going to plant as many seeds of this truth as I can in your energy field to really bring you to life and activate um, your true essence. <laughs> so I'm, I'm allowing sort of opening the door to the others to come in. And it's interesting because it's like a like a mini family, like an awkward mini family that comes in to go visit this old man in the heart. He's a bit stunned. He doesn't even know what to make of this. He looks at each one as though they're, this is an awkward family, but I'll take anything right now. I will take literally anything right now. And it's like he hasn't seen anybody in a really long time. So it's like a, um, like cap, Castaway, like the old Tom Hanks Castaway movie where he like starts to like he uses a basketball and puts a face on it um, in order to give himself company. Um, he's like at that level where he doesn't know how to live. He's starting to kind of lose it because he doesn't have any company. Hmm. And he actually wonders if he's hallucinating. <laughs> actually wonders if this is real. But I become his eyes for him and his mind in order to help him to know that this is real. And I want him to stand up and I want him to al allow himself to feel the reality of this. I will say there's a major, major movement in the entire face region, in the entire back of the head region. It's just a lot, a lot of dense movement here. And even in the throat too. Obviously we're looking at the heart, so it's interesting that this is moving a lot of this stuff, but I'm not feeling the heart actually. But we are in the heart. <laughs> so we got some major energy blocks, but we're gonna really loosen this stuff up. He is starting to acclimate to these visitors and it's almost like they're um, helping him to remember parts of himself that he forgot, which they show up as memories. Um, he doesn't have Alzheimer's or anything. Like, that's clear. He has his mind about him. But sometimes we need people to help us to remember things that we forgot. And then when we remember that, it's like, oh, wow, you really bring up some old memories. I, I even thought about that in a really long time. So these uh, people, which are part of you, which are also a part of him, which he is also a part of you. <laughs> They're all um, having a moment right now. And it feels like old family members, like he hasn't seen in a really long time. And he's almost in tears right now because he's so moved. And he just starts to hug him. Even the like the air pocket, <laughs> it's a little girl and this guy is still like all in black with the bow and arrow. He's just hugging them. Um, and he's just so happy, so, so happy. He thought nobody would ever come. 
he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and he just, just didn't think anybody would ever come. And they, they, he sort of looks at me and says, I don't, I, what do we do now? And I say, you need to stop trying to figure out what you need to do. What, what you what what we do is we just we just live one moment at a time so um why not just continue to embrace this moment it's precious he has a busy mind and um and so it's hard to just stay in this moment it's very hard to just stay in this moment because he feels like he needs to be actively doing the next thing. And I say, wait, you, you, the, the, the family just showed up. All this exciting stuff is happening. And now you're wanting to busy yourself doing something? And no, you need to stop for a minute. And you need to actually acknowledge this moment and stay in this moment. And cherish it as though it's the only thing that you have left to do. So he does. He, I can't even believe the burden this man carries on his back. It's like a backpack full of bricks. Um, but it's heavier than bricks, like the, as heavy as an elephant. And when he takes it off his shoulders, he goes, thump, onto the ground. And it's like, wow. His, his back and his shoulders feel so much lighter. Man, this energy in the back of the head, I mean, it's just, it's just been all circulating in this here. It's almost about like, it's like going to drip down the back of the neck. <sighs> yeah. I tell him that I, I want you to open up to receiving. <sighs> These are parts of you. And you are part of them. So nobody is more or less than the other. And it's important for you all to come together as one light. There's this just a moment here. The man is thinking. And he seems to kind of be in control of the decisions of the others, which I'm not really a fan of. I mean, this, that's not actually allowing them to have the chance to share. That's controlling them, and I don't like that. I'm telling him this. No wonder this is moving the head so much because he's really connected to the mind, even though this is all in the heart, right? Because what we need to do is bring all this energy out of the mind and start um, balancing it. I mean, this stuff needs to start getting balanced downward, Um it just does. It's, this mind energy needs to really be processed more in the heart. I know as a medical student, I guarantee you're working with your mind a lot. Um, but this this is a huge energy flow jam. And this guy at the forefront is not actually, you know, he, just a moment here. Let me just keep watching. I tell him, you're not in the mind anymore, and you do not control them. You don't decide what they do. You all work together as a team, and you all work together. This is important. It's almost like all these are reflections of different chakra bodies. Like he's like the mental body, and the shy girl's like the throat or something, you know? Um, this aggressive fighter, maybe emotional gut, you know, like this, um, this puff, I, you know, who knows where these are from, but they also remind me of different parts of energy bodies that need to start working together. And they're all in the heart and we need to activate your heart as well. This, this is, so I'm not able to access right at this moment um, all the specific things you're looking for. What I am being called to do is to bring major balance to your energy field. When our energy field is balanced, you would, you can't imagine how open you become to so much more than you ever thought, you ever wanted to know about. And you start to ignite with brightness, clarity, something more than you could put your finger on. Because you're starting to let the, the like the blood flow, but it's the energy flow. 
then we can't have like a um, a blocked artery, right? And we can't have um, blocked heart um, chakra. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good either. Like, like energies can get blocked, block, 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 and you're still gonna live, but you're gonna live in a really awkward way, you know, trying to adapt to that weird balance. Um, so we're just gonna keep this. I will say your heart is starting to like circulate and open up more, which is really, really good. And I'm starting to see mental body um, starting to open up to the idea of a new way, a new way of being, which is awesome. Uh, I will say this, all this mind energy is dripping. It feels like it's dripping down the back of the head, down the spine. Your heart's starting to open up, throat is starting to feel more active, and the emotional gut is also starting to feel more active. <sighs> Sadness is starting to stream from the eyes again. We're gonna we're gonna have a, an answer to the riddle at the beginning of this. I, I'm quite confident. I'm going to bring an understanding to the surface about this. All right. Uh, I'm gonna ask this puff. Um, so so let's say the girl is throat. Let's say the guy is mental body. Let's say this bow and arrow guy is emotional gut. And I say to the puff, are you sexual body? Um, can you help me to understand your place in all of this? All right, Puff is like super vulnerable. And it actually makes my stomach shake. It makes my eyes want to cry. Um, makes it hard to breathe. And uh, it's just like a lot of energy gets jammed here in my throat. I feel like I swallowed a rock and the rock is in my stomach being digested and it hurts. Uh, I take the rock out of the stomach and I say no. We're going to reconcile the communication between all of you. There, there's no vulnerable reactions anymore to each other. There's only open arms and embrace. We're going to work together within the heart and everybody's going to heal today. More energy dripping from the mind down the back, down the spine is what it's like. It's really, really intense behind my ears. It's almost starting to flow almost all the way down the back. The back is, I'm starting to feel it in my lower back. And I put this, this puff, actually, I just place it into sacral chakra, which is divine sexual space. And I just want to see what happens. And it's just, uh, it's not sure how to grow. It's just not sure how to grow in here. In this dark, it's like a dark, um, it's just dark right now. And it's like this puff is like, um, like a really gentle, soft flower that almost became like a ghost apparition. Um, and it wants to open up, like it really wants to open up to the sunlight. Um, but it's just like closed. This is really important because when our sexual bodies are activated, um, we fill with inspirations. Um, it's not just about intimacy with, with other souls, right? Um, it's about the pleasure of being ourself and the pleasure of living our life. Um, the joyful connections that we can make with literally anything and everything. Music, art, um, anything, dancing. Um, it's the pleasure of living as well. So to activate this space is going to really ignite your your pleasure for living. This is super important. This will help you. Man These answers are going to come, okay? But this is what I'm called to do. Ah, this is, I'm telling you, the energy is really, really powerful. And it's, uh, it's flowing down still. And it's it's almost hit. It's almost hit the sacral. And we're almost there with, with all the energy that's finally starting to drip down. <laughs> it's almost there. Okay, so so what's in here? Oh, I'm gonna take this super gorgeous flame from above the head, and I just wanna I just wanna place it in here. Just see what happens, okay? I just wanna see what happens. 
um <laughs> you're not gonna believe what happens um it actually turns into adorable little troll with the poofy hair um that's what it does it turns into a troll like a troll doll is a troll movies like the cute little trolls it does that and its hair is the color of like a pink and purple and whitish silver and um, it actually puts that, that puff flower into its heart and it walks deep, 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 deep into your sexual body. <sighs> Which sexual body is an infinite space. It's like a, it's like a heart portal or throat chakra or anything else. It's just like a circular it's a sphere. Like, but you go in, it's like an infinite tunnel space full of information. And so we're just going deeper and deeper and deeper in here. This uh, troll seems to have some magic about it and it's like clapping its hands and doing some weird dances and some weird like, I don't know, like sign language or something. Um, but it's activating, it's like some, some sort of magic. And all the black that is here is starting to, um, the extraterrestrial thing, this is interesting because this is starting to look like the inside of an alien spaceship. So it's doing some weird like his symbols and uh, movements and things. Um, and somehow it's creating an energy reaction that is activating the space. It looks like the inside of an alien spaceship. It starts to glow with all these different lines all around the inside. Um, and it feels like information is even in the walls and in the light and within the floor and the ceiling of this space. Information. Really, really meaningful information. And they say that the information that is stored within your sexual body is going to take you places. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's, a, it's serious. It's like um, you have a library, a very special soul library that is here. Um, and activating the space is going to activate more than you can imagine. It's more special. It's like, I don't want to say more special, but I can tell you that, that this is very exciting. This is just, you know, we need the mind and stuff, but this is, this is time, you know, it's time for this library to open up, <laughs> to get turned on. And it's just igniting everywhere. It's like very, 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 very exciting. Um, it feels like um, we did it. It feels like uh, um, an old ancient space has been discovered and we're the archaeologists and we're finding all this treasure and information and we're so excited to dive in and to learn and to discover and to remember. Um, it's literally on this extraordinary level. It's like finding a brand new like Egyptian pyramid that was buried under the sand or something. I mean, it's a big deal. And I see this uh, troll actually turn into particles and become a part of um, everything that's in here. It just, it's everything in here starts to, um, I mean, it's just absorbing in and I feel like it's just becoming so full of love in here. And all the love that is in your sexual body is sending powerful surges of energy actually upward. It's energy. It's an interesting because there's all this energy kind of like a dense and sort of uh, dripping now downward. Well, with this activated, it's sending powerful energy up and down your, it's like Kundalini awakening style. Throat is really excited about this, is saying that I'm really excited about this. Um, oh boy. <sighs> this little girl knows a lot more. You know, she's like a... <sighs> she never wanted to hide. She never... She always wanted to come out and to express um, the things that she had to share, but nobody took her seriously because she was just a little girl. Um, but no, she's actually got a lot to say. Mm. You have some incredible parts of yourself. You have some really incredible parts of yourself. Um, I'm just going to say this. This has been a really fun riddle to solve. And it's all about bringing your energy field into balance, which is going to, you're going to notice a significant shift in the way that you're feeling and you're processing the world around you and your life. Okay. They're showing me an interesting twist to this riddle. Um, they show me that you, one of your spirit guides is very protective um, and will keep you safe, for instance. Um, 
there's something about this with the, the bow and arrow. Um, it's not meant to hurt anybody, but it's meant to keep an eye on you to make sure that, um, you know, you don't find yourself in a, in a pothole um, that isn't really going to benefit your growth and development. So it's keeping an eye on you. Um, it's really important that the, the spirit guide is very insistent that it, it, that it stand by you to, to guide you through this time right now. I, it's kind of strange when they say they're going to protect you. It's like, well, protect, protect you from what? Billions of demons and freaking, you know, seriously, like protect me from what? Um, but it's to, to keep an eye on, on your, your soul's progress and growth and development and and make sure there's nothing that kind of gets in the way of what is some grander purpose okay that's the best way i could define it this little girl is actually a spirit guide as well um do not take her lightly she's she would she would she's like one of those like very interesting angel types that would like to show themselves as a weak um, um little girl that anybody could push around and toy with but that's her, that's her, um, twist. Um, she can, she can kind of, um, to see who your true character, to see your true nature, she would actually put on a disguise in order to see how you would treat her to react, react to her. Um, but she's really bringing out your true nature. And there's something about how she brings things out in people. Um, but she's a healer. She's actually, there's something about her as also a healer. So there's something tricksy about, about her, but she's really clever and she's really original. And there's something angelic about her energy as well. Hmm. I got nothing else to say about this troll and this poof energy. Nothing else comes to me. This guy, this old man in the mind and Nothing else is coming to me about that either. I just know that I'm supposed to tell you these things, okay? I'm just going to stop for just a moment longer and just... Your energy field feels like it's buzzing out of control. Your, men, your mind area is like super hot. Like right here is really hot in the back of my head. It's buzzing like crazy. <sighs> things feel like they're digesting properly. Energy is flowing and digesting in your emotional gut like energy is flowing properly and digesting properly all of your energy bodies are getting to participate in the experience you're going to feel more balanced um something is ignited and activated within you and it's in your sacral chakra okay it's a really big deal it's really special hmm i feel like this is only the beginning of what you're going to discover about your soul so that's kind of exciting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that's all I got to share. You just never know it's going to come, do you? Thank you so much for exploring the session with me and for sharing with others. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Hope you all have a great day.